Hello everyone, it's Greg here, and today I want to talk about writing files with root privileges from inside NeoVim. Now, this is something that was quite easy to do from inside Vim, and it's not so easy to do from inside NeoVim. Um, first of all, I think I'm going to show you the Vim trick, uh, and then we'll look at how to do it in NeoVim. Um, so the Vim trick is right here. Um, I'm actually in NeoVim right now, so I'm going to open I'm going to open an instance of Vim so I can show you the uh, the trick. Now, when I run Vim, uh, because I've got an alias to NeoVim. Uh, that would actually open NeoVim, right? So uh, I don't want to do that. I've got to use backslash Vim, uh, which as you can see here, uh, is what allows me to get into old school Vim itself. So let's let's get into old school Vim um, and let's edit a file, which I happen to know is owned by root. Let's say that one. Um, and you see here that when I try to edit it, it warns me, I'm going to go, hello. Um, I'm going to try to write it and I'll say, no, you can't write this. It's read only. Um, so we try with bang. Also doesn't work because I'm not root. Um, so let's try with the trick. Um, so basically we're going to write bang sudo t the current file and redirect to dev null and see what happens. It prompts me for a password, so let's do that. Um, and then it says, well, something's happened. Um, and what has happened? Well, I had unsafe changes in my buffer. And Vim has also noticed that the file system has changed because the timestamp on the file has changed. Um, and it's checked and it's seen that the contents of the file have changed because we just changed it and it's asking what we want to do. Well, we're, we're the ones who made the change, so we're not worried. We're just going to load the file again. Um, and you'll see uh, that what it loaded off the disk is indeed what we had in the buffer. So we're all good. Um, and if I do that again, let's just say I remove the comment um, and then I do my little trick again. Uh, this time it didn't ask me for a password because sudo uh, caches those credentials for a little while. Um, and so I'm just going to load that file and we're back to normal. So let's talk about how that trick actually worked. Um, now there is a good explanation of this on Stack Overflow. So I'm gonna provide a link to this uh, question and answer in the show notes. Uh, but just briefly, uh, what's actually happening here? Well, the W command with followed by a bang is basically saying, take the contents of the buffer and write them out like over a pipe to another process. Um, and in this case, the other process we're, we're piping out to is sudo. Um, and sudo, we've told it to run T um, and we've given it percent there, which expands to the current file name. So in this case, etc. bash dot bash rc. So what is t going to do? It's going to send the output into two, two different places. Uh, first of all, it's going to send the output to the file uh, that we named there, bash dot bash rc. And also it's going to send it to its own standard out. But we actually don't care about the standard out, so we send that to dev null. Um, so the net effect of this is that sudo as root will write whatever got piped into it onto the file system at that name, which is what we want. Um, now you might think, well, why couldn't I do something like, you know, sudo cat, whatever I got, to uh, to a, a file like etc. bash dot bash rc. Now that won't work because while cat will run with root privileges, what it pipes out over its standard out is then handed off uh, to another process, which in this case is the calling processes uh, shell. Uh, the shell is running as us and so when the shell tries to redirect to bash.bashrc which is not actually the right file name um, it won't work because it's not running as root. Um, so that's why we have to use the, the t trick. Okay so that's the trick um, and now I guess we can try doing the same trick in NeoVim and we'll see that it doesn't work. So let's let's give this a shot. Let's open that same file etc bash whatever it was bashrc and here we're going to make a couple of edits. I'm going to go right to sudo t percent um, and redirect the standard output to dev null. And it says, we can't read your password, sorry. Um, and now this is explained uh, in considerable detail uh, in this uh, issue here that uh, I've, I've linked there in my dot files. Um, so let's have a quick look at that. Um, and it's not even the only issue, but there's a, there's a few issues floating around in the NeoVim repo. Um, where people have tried to make something like this work and it hasn't worked. Um, and if we go all the way to the bottom, uh, here's the summary that um, there is a plugin for this. Um, you might be able to abuse the term command uh, and you know, maybe in the future there'll be some change made uh, to allow this to work. Um, now looking at the plugin, uh, I, I personally don't like to use plugins for things that I can re you know, replace with a few lines of Lua or VimScript. Um, so if we look at this one, uh, it's got, you know, 30 lines of VimScript. Uh, it's got an auto-loaded function, which is 265 lines. So there is some complexity here. 
I just took a quick look at this and thought, I'm just gonna try to do this with like 10 lines of MimScript and see what happens. Um, so let's have a look at what I've got. Um, so basically, uh, we define a command uh, called uppercase W. I mean, and additionally, we say that it can be called with bang. So, you know, we can do both W and we can do W bang and they'll, they'll both work. And it's gonna call a Lua function. So uh, let's get that Lua function open. So that would be under Winston pseudo Lua, right? That one there. And let's have a look at this thing. Um, so I think here's the interesting part, I guess. Uh, basically, well, I guess we'll look at that later. Um, what are we going to do? The, the, the core of the trick is um, we're going to basically do this. Um, we're going to set the sudo ask pass environment variable um, to a file that we've created that whose, which, whose job is to print the sudo password to standard out. And so instead of prompting us for a password, sudo will run this program and expect the password to be emitted to standard out. And then the rest is the same. So if I look here, you'll see um, dot, uh, dash A is telling sudo to use the ask pass program, but the rest is the same. T percent, uh, we'll take the, the current file name and write out to it and we redirect the standard out to dev null. So what's this ask pass program? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Basically, um, well, first of all, we use Vim's temp name function which you can learn about here. Um, it will give you a temporary file name that you can use in a private location. This is important because if we're going to be writing our password out to disk, we want to make sure that it's in a location uh, where no one else can read. Um, so we get this private location, which um, if you just want to see what kind of path you get, I'm on an Arch Linux machine right now. Um, it's giving a path in a, a directory that is owned by me and has got an unpredictable path. Um, so I can write to this file and I don't have to worry about anyone else reading it. Um, so the first thing we do, um, we write to the file. Um, I just start by writing an empty string into it. Um, the S switch here tells them to sync the results to the file system immediately, so which uh, you can once again learn more about in the help. Right. Um, and so we're effectively just touching the file, creating it on the file system. Then we call setfperm, which is another Vim function. Um, and we give it a string saying, you know, we want what, what, we, what we want the permissions to be. So basically we want this to be readable, writable, executable by us and nobody else. Um, this is probably not strictly speaking necessary because the file name is already written to a secure location. Uh, but, you know, defense in depth is a good thing. Finally, we write the actual script. And as you can see here, what we want it to do, um, we want it to be a bash script um, that does nothing but echo a password. Um, and you can see here, uh, the password is shell escape there so that we can, we can write the password out. Um, then once we've got that, we can actually proceed to invoke sudo t just like we did in the Vim case, um, and it's going to do the right thing. Um, and the last thing we're going to do is clean up the the file that we created. So you notice that uh, in case this file this command threw an error for whatever reason, I've got it inside p call here, uh, which is Lua's exception rescuing mechanism. Uh, that way, I know that even if this command fails, I will delete the file which has my password in it uh, on the disk. Um, once again, defense in depth. I shouldn't have to worry about people reading this file, but just in case I want it to be on the file system for as short a period as possible. Um, and so that leaves the last part of the uh, equation, which is how do we actually get the password? Well, there's this input secret function that Vim has, uh, which basically prompts a user for a secret password, but won't show it on the screen. Um, and we additionally cache it um, because that's what sudo does as well. It just seemed like a convenient thing to do. Um, so if I'm just gonna go up here, oops, to the top. Um, you can see basically we, oh, that's wrong. <laughs> I was caching it for five microseconds during testing, um, but I actually want it to be cached for five minutes. Um, so five minutes times by 60 seconds times by a thousand milliseconds, that's how long we're gonna cache for. Um, basically we input the secret um, and then we set up a timer that will clear out the secret out of out of memory. Um, well, not out of memory, it'll, it'll assign nil to the to the variable that held the secret. So technically it's probably still in memory somewhere, but uh, you know, you'd, you'd need to attach with a debugger to inspect the memory, or you'd have to be a, someone who's already running as root to be able to inspect the memory of another process to get this password. So it's probably, you know, it's, it's a security trade-off. It's not the most secure thing in the world, but it's also not the end of the world. Um, so basically, yeah, that's what this code does. Um, it will cache the password for up to five minutes so that I can repeatedly write the file without being prompted again and again and again. Um, and if I ever wanna be prompted because maybe the cache password is incorrect, I can call w bang, um, and then I will be prompted again, even if I did have a cache password. 
Um, so I think that's all the pieces here that I've uh, we're now shown. Um, the only other thing is these little expect reject functions uh, I made. Um, these are just helper functions that say, you know, run this function in here and expect the output to be zero. Uh, and if it's not zero, that means something went wrong. Um, and reject is the opposite uh, because for some reason, uh, the way Vim in indicates success in the case of set f perm is the opposite to how it indicates success in the case of write file. In the case of write file, it returns zero if everything was great. Uh, in the case of set f perm, it returns non-zero if everything was great. So thank you, Vim. Um, but I think in general, this is a good example of how um, you can write Lua. You can write stuff in Lua, um, and there's no real problem with calling Vim functions because sometimes it is easier to just call into the Vim function um, than to recreate the functionality in from Lua. Um, and you know, for me, the main reason to use Lua uh, is because I want things to go fast. Whereas this is the kind of thing that it runs as often as I type, you know, colon shift W, which is not very often. So speed is not a concern at all, but being able to write it in an easy way is, is what's interesting. So I guess the last thing I'll show you is just the implementation of these functions. They're both the same, basically. We call the function and then we, we emit an error if there was a problem, right? So I think, I think at this point we can look at the, uh, the, uh, the thing working right so so let's do this um so let's let's make an edit to this file edit to this file and let's write it with shift w you see it asks me for my password so now you all know how long my password is and i get the same prompt which was you know the file change on disk do you want to load it of course i do now i would like to get rid of that prompt uh, but i'm not sure how so if you have any ideas please leave a comment um, and then I guess if I undo that edit and then rewrite again, you'll see this time it didn't prompt me for the password and I've got the same prompt again. So once again, if you have an idea of how to get rid of that, that prompt, it'll be great. Um, the only gotcha really with this, apart from the security trade-offs that I've already mentioned, uh, is that if you get your password wrong, your wrong password will be cached. And so you'll have to re-enter it. So let's, let's have a look at that. Let's do, um, I'm going to do bang, which is going to force it to prompt me uh, for my password, even though... Um, it's already cached and I'm going to put crap here. Um, first thing to notice is there's a pause and that's because sudo is actually pausing like it does uh, when the wrong password is given um, and then it asks again and again. So um, there are actually a few pauses in there um, before it finally gave up and I, the editor unblocked itself. So at the moment I've got a bad password cached um, and if I try to write um, it will also fail again. See, the part, see it's blocked again, that's because the password is wrong, sudo's waiting, it prompts again, it waits, prompts again, then it returns control of the editor. So you basically, you know, try not to get your password wrong, um, but if you ever do, you could use wbang and it will reprompt you. Um, and I'll say hi and it will fail again. So just, I guess the last thing I want to demo is like, wh where is that delay coming from? Um, so if we just make like a temporary file, like crap.sh, um, and we echo in bad password right so that's what would be in a file if I entered a bad password um, let's make it executable and then let's tell sudo to use this so uh, sudo ask pass equals this thing um, and then we run sudo use ask pass and what other arguments did I give it? I don't think I gave it any um, I'll just tell it to run ls so you see here, um, the terminal is also pausing because it, you know, it waits, it asks to try again, runs the ask pass program, asks to try again, and then finally gives up. So this is another thing that I would love to get rid of, uh, but I can't figure out how to force sudo to ask only once and just give up immediately. Because for example, if I do this, which tells it to run in non-interactive mode, uh, it won't even run the ask pass program. It just goes, no, you need a password. Um, and likewise, um, it is possible, I think, in the sudo's file to uh, tell sudo how many attempts or how many tries it should allow, but I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to change the global limit of retries for everybody. I just want to change it to this one invocation. So um, given that I rarely write files as root, um, this is an annoying limitation, but not one I have to face very often, so I'm probably just going to do nothing about it, but if you have an idea, let me know. Um, and I think that's all I got to say about writing files as root. Um, all I would say uh, is, you know, uh, I'll leave a link to this in my dot files repo so you can look at it. But I, I put here in the comment message a bunch of disclaimers about like where the password is being stored in memory and on disk and, you know, why you should think carefully before using this kind of technique. Um, for me, it's a risk I'm prepared to run. Um, so 
something that you should nevertheless evaluate uh, if, if you were to use it yourself. Uh, so that's all I've got for now. I thought it was going to be a three minute screencast. I don't know how long it's been, but it feels like I've been talking for like 20 minutes. So sorry about that. Um, and I'll see you again next time.